Hi everyone, it's Ken here and I'm back with a new project. This time, we're going to build a clock. When I started metalworking around eight years ago, it had always been a desire of mine to build a clock. And now, after eight years of learning, I think I'm finally ready. The clock I'm going to build is based on a design by John Wilding and he published this actually series of articles which is now available in book form. Once you buy the book you'll find that it's filled with uh, drawings and explanations which unfortunately assume that you've already built a number of clocks before. I'm going to try my best to explain the things that John glosses over. John has created a beautiful design to his clock. He calls it a skeleton clock because obviously you can see through the body and watch all the works move as the clock is running. The one change that I made, if you look at his frame, you'll see that it's very angular in nature. And I felt for my clock that I would alter that and make a smoother, a more contoured frame. Other than that, I have followed his design to the letter and gone one by one through his drawings and created CAD files. While it's possible to build the clock directly from the drawings in the book, I felt that putting it together in a CAD program helped me to understand how all the parts connected to one another and what made the clock actually work. Beyond that, you know that I tend to use CNC whenever possible, and that obviously requires the use of a CAD program. There are quite a number of gears involved in the clock, which in clock terminology, gears are called wheels. This main one is about eight and a half inches in diameter and has 290 teeth on it. The other gears or wheels are much more reasonable. And as you can see, there are two pinions here uh, which are made from steel. The rest of the gears are made from brass. The gears have different tooth forms or different size tooth forms. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. You'll need quite a few materials to build the clock. So while I was doing the CAD drawing, I began searching for the materials, which are not easy to find, at least not in a single source. Certainly you're gonna need lots of brass in various thicknesses. You'll need a tube for the barrel, some rods, and then there are steel parts that you'll need to make. So I purchased some steel. And on top of that, it's always good to have some aluminum around for building some fixtures and, uh, and such. To make the wheels, you're going to need a whole set of cutters. These are available from P.P. Thornton, which is a company in England. This cutter here is for making the recoil. And this one for making the ratchet. And then you'll need three epicycloidal cutters for cutting the rest of the wheels. These are in various uh, modules or sizes. This one here is a 0.55. This one a 0.75. And this one a 0.6. You're also going to need to make your own holder for the cutters. Mine is made out of steel. It just has a small boss on the top of it. The cutter screws on, and it's actually very simple to make. The book you'll need, as well as many of the harder-to-find parts, are available on a website hosted by Ian Cobb, and I've provided the link in the description. These are the blue steel pivot rods that the gears will be mounted on. This is the mainspring, and it's very specific to this clock. You'll have to purchase this specific spring. The author of the book recommends that you purchase the pinions because they're very, very difficult to cut. I took his advice. As you can see, there's still a fair amount of work that needs to be done on them, but I thought I would start with these. So by now you're thinking, hey, isn't that the same clock Chris is making over on the ClickSpring channel? And of course it is. Chris wouldn't have spent countless hours making those beautiful videos if he wasn't trying to teach others how to make the same clock. Now Chris and I have very different levels of experience. 
different tools and therefore we use different techniques to accomplish the same tasks. Whereas Chris uses a scroll saw and files to make the spokes on his gears, I'm going to do the same task using CNC. There is no right and wrong to this, we're each just using the tools and the experience that we have. So, while in many cases I'll be doing things exactly the same way Chris did, in others I'll be using very, very different techniques. The CAD program I'm using for this project is a new offering from Autodesk. It's called Fusion 360. And it's an extremely powerful CAD program. It supports full 3D parametric modeling integrated with 3D sculpting, rendering, which is how I built the opening scene, animation, which is how I did the clock hands moving, full material simulation for stress testing, and the cam portion is absolutely amazing. The reason I mention all of this is because Autodesk has made this program free for hobbyists and for students. Well, it's time to get down to my workshop and get started on my clock. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see the subsequent videos on how I build this clock, please hit the subscribe. If you're interested in my other projects, you can find them at my website, which is www.zeman.com. I will see you all soon.